Hey everyone, I'm Catherine and welcome to my channel. So my voice sounds a little bit different in this video because I've actually had a bit of a head cold over the last couple of days. And if you follow my channel and my baby related content, you'll know that I have an almost eight month old son and he's actually had his first head cold. So you can imagine how much fun we've had in our household over the last week. On that note, in this video, we're gonna be covering the Lacey Spears case. Now Lacey Spears was a mother who did the unthinkable. She harmed her own son. Lacey Spears had Munchausen syndrome by proxy. What is Munchausen syndrome by proxy, you ask? Well, it involves someone in a position of power taking advantage of a vulnerable person by making them sick intentionally. And they do this so they get attention, whether that be on online, so social media, or whether that be attention from family and friends. And it's not just related to parents doing this to their children. It can be, for example, a nurse doing this to a patient or someone working in the elderly sector doing this to a patient. Anyone who has a position of power and who has access to a vulnerable person. So that really encapsulates the concept of Munchausen syndrome by proxy. And as indicated, Lacey Spears is a mother and she does the unthinkable to her son. Now, if this concept of harming children is too much for you, I've got plenty of other videos, but if this content interests you, Let's jump right in. And I will say at the end of this video, I am going to include the footage at the hospital of Lacey where she completes the final act, which actually end her son's life. So again, I'm starting this video with a trigger warning, a very intentional trigger warning. If this video is not for you, jump into another one. And if it is, let's jump right in. Lacey Elizabeth Spears was born in California in 1987. Now, growing up, she had kind of a regular upbringing. However, both of her parents were quite unwell. Her mother had type 1 diabetes and her father had both Crohn's disease and celiac disease. And so from a young age, she observed her parents requiring a lot of medical assistance and a lot of medical attention. So I think that's kind of important with respect to Lacey's background. She grew up and she observed okay, my, my, my dad's extra sick this week, so he gets extra attention. So she learned that sickness results in additional care and attention from a very, very young age. Other than her parents being quite unwell while she grew up, her, child, her childhood and her upbringing was quite normal. She had a lot of friends in both primary school and high school. And other than going to hospitals with her parents, there was no reported abuse or anything like that in the household. There was one occasion when Lacey was quite young and she was friends with another child by the name of Mallory. Now, Mallory reports that she didn't get a very good vibe from Lacey's family. And on one occasion, she went to Lacey's house to play with Lacey and she was playing with one of Lacey's dolls, which angered Lacey. Lacey actually choked her, strangled her. And when her mum picked her up from Lacey's house that afternoon and asked, what happened to your neck? She observed red marks around her daughter's neck. She told her mum. And that was something that stood out. So although I said, you know, she's pretty, pretty normal childhood and upbringing, that's a cause for concern. So it might be that something else happened under the surface that wasn't really released to the public. But um, that is one incident of concerning behavior from, from Lacey at a very young age. Lacey's friends growing up nicknamed her Lacey Bug, which is a pretty cute nickname. Her friends observed from a pretty young age, Lacey started to tell extravagant stories and lies. And they noticed this, you know, in primary school and in high school. So some examples they gave in high school was, you know, she'd say she'd had a broken ankle or a sprained ankle and she'd be limping one day. And then they'd observe her at school, not limping, walking quite fine. And then the next day, the, the swollen ankle would be gone and she wouldn't need crutches anymore. And she always had a different illness or something was sick all the time. And her friends started to think it was a bit weird. So there's a bit of compulsive lying from a pretty young age going on that was observed by her friends. Her friends said that she seemed to like the attention. So her eyes would light up, you know, when they'd say, are you okay? Can we go to the canteen for you? Can we help you in any way? they could tell that Lacey really absorbed and thrived on them giving her special attention whenever she was sick. Her friends recall that just before Lacey was supposed to start high school, she told them that she'd fallen pregnant and that she couldn't keep the baby. So she needed an at the local hospital. And so she told her friends that she went for the procedure um, because she couldn't keep the baby. But then the friends found out that the hospital she told them she went to didn't perform that procedure. And so this was a very concerning lie 
Uh, but as I've said, the friend said that it was pretty routine just to kind of take what she said with a grain of salt because she did lie so frequently. Lacey graduated high school in 2005 and she moved in with her sister and she got a job at a local daycare. Now, she loved babies. She was obsessed with babies. And it's said that she started to take some of the parents' kids home with her with consent of the parents and, and put in extra hours caring for some children. And she did this to help the parents who had to work late, you know, beyond the hours of the daycare center. But she loved it. It wasn't really a job for her. She adored these children. And there was one child that she grew particularly close with, a little boy. And she actually, there was a party for the boy. And she uploaded over 300 photos of this particular child who wasn't hers. So I found that a bit weird. Uploading so many photos. It's, it's almost like, and I'm, I'm, this is my opinion, she was treating the baby like it was her own child. Uh, to the outward public on social media. Lacey started dating a police officer by the name of Blake, and he is a real person. She went on a couple of dates with him. However, as Lacey did, she lied to her friends and stretched the truth. She told her friends that they were engaged and that the relationship was a lot more serious than it actually was. In 2008, Lacey started dating a man by the name of Chris Hill. I use the word dating liberally. They lived in an apartment. I think he was downstairs, she was upstairs or vice versa. So Chris described it as neighbors with benefits. Nonetheless, Lacey started this sexual relationship with this man, Chris, and she actually fell pregnant. Now, soon after she fell pregnant, she cut everything off with Chris. And Chris was reported to have said, I think she likes the concept of having a baby more than actually being with me. And that's exactly what happened. She fell pregnant and cut him off and said, it's not even yours, it's Blake's baby, has nothing to do with you. So as soon as she was pregnant, she cut Chris out of her life and she was over the moon. She was thrilled to finally be pregnant and to finally have a child of her own on the way. Lacey gave birth to her son on the 8th of December of 2008 and she named her baby Garnett Paul, that was hyphenated, so Garnett Paul Thompson Johnson Spears. That's almost cruel. Imagine the baby in kindergarten trying to write that his full name when other kids have like Joe Smith or Amy Marie Brown. He's got so his name was Garnett Paul hyphenated Thompson Johnson Spears. Lacey was over the moon, and of course, MySpace was a thing back then. I don't know if you're old enough watching this to remember MySpace. I definitely had a MySpace account. She started posting photos, posts about her baby and how over the moon she was. But when Garnett was just four days old, he was sick and she took him to hospital. Lacey reported to medical staff that he had a very high fever. He was pulling at his ears and she thought he had jaundice. But at the hospital, they looked at him and they couldn't find anything wrong. So they sent him home. This became a repeated pattern. Lacey continued to take the baby to the hospital every few days with something new wrong, an ear infection, high fever but they found nothing wrong. When Garnett was just six weeks old, she took him to the hospital and he saw a pediatrician. The pediatrician looked at the report and the records of how often Lacey was attending the hospital and that they could find nothing wrong. And he actually put in his notes that she, that he speculated that Lacey had Munchausen syndrome by proxy. So he picked up on this. In response to the doctor suggesting that she had Munchausen syndrome by proxy, a social worker actually attended Lacey's home twice. And on both occasions, she was not home. And so they closed the file. Again, this is the system failing baby Garnett. This doctor had picked up on this so early on and they tried to do their job. And just because she wasn't home, they closed the case. Imagine if I murdered someone and the police came to speak to me and I wasn't home twice. So yeah, it's cool. You're sweet, just you'll get away with it. Like I almost can't fathom this significant failure. And ultimately it led to Garnett's death. In response to CPS coming and trying to question Lacey and because the doctor had picked up on her what she was doing, she actually stopped taking the child to that hospital and she started taking baby Garnett somewhere else, which is very common for people with Munchausen syndrome by proxy, is as soon as someone picks up on what they're doing and they, you know, it's become suspicious, they'll go somewhere else. So she started taking baby Garnett somewhere else and she said she complained of the fact that he that he could not keep his milk down. So that doctor, the second doctor, actually diagnosed baby Garnett with acid reflux, which is pretty common in babies. And of course, with this diagnosis, Lacey was posting all over social media, woe is me, 
um, baby Garnett sick again back at the hospital. So with every attendance at the hospital, you best believe that there was a post to follow it. So people were commenting, oh, you know, my, my well wishes for your family, you know, sympathy for you and your family. We hope you make it out. Can we help you at all? So it's this sympathy that she was thriving on every time she do a social media post um, every time that baby Garnett was taken to the hospital with an issue. Some of Lacey's friends say that when baby Garnett was two months old, she seemed to change as a mother and they say she actually became abusive. One of her friends reported to CPS that they saw Lacey screaming at her baby in the car park of Walmart. And another one said that they were out for lunch with baby Garnett and the baby was crying and misbehaving as Lacey referred to it. And so she slapped, smacked him. So a baby at two months old does not have the mental capacity to understand bad behavior. They, they literally cry when they're hungry or they need help from a parent, from a carer. So that kind of gives you an insight into her warped sense of mind. She thought that the, by smack, smacking the baby, a two month old baby who was crying, that the baby would learn when the baby doesn't even have the mental capacity to learn right from wrong at that age. CPS didn't intervene, so she kept the baby and Lacey continued to go to, diff to, go to, to go to the doctor complaining of the acid reflux. So the doctor actually ended up booking baby Garnett in for a surgery to tighten up his esophag esophagus. or There was a procedure performed so that he couldn't spit up, so to prevent him from having the acid reflux. So he actually had a surgery. So just remember that. This poor little boy can no longer spit up, which babies need to do. On the 11th of February the following year, Lacey took baby Garnett to the hospital and she complained that he wasn't taking the bottle. So the nurses tried to give baby Garnett the bottle and they asked what was in it because apparently as soon as he drank the formula, he became almost sedated. So he did take a little bit of bottle there and he became sedated. And she was like, nothing, it's just formula. So the diagnosis on the record was improper formula. They ended up performing more tests on baby Garnett and they found that he had an extremely high level of sodium, so salt, sodium in his blood and they performed a lot more tests and he ended up having significant seizures and he was rushed to a bigger hospital so they could provide more sufficient care for this little boy who was having seizures in response to suspected the high sodium. His body went into shock and he actually ended up being intubated. So you have to think this is a three month old baby boy who's having seizures and he's being intubated. A few weeks later, baby Garnett stabilized and he was released. But over the coming months, he kept coming back to hospital with ear infections now and serious ear infections at that. On one occasion, his eyes and his ears started bleeding. Baby Garnett had to have surgery on his eardrums. Um, and so, of course, Lacey is posting about my poor boy going in for surgery, extremely, you know, getting all the sympathy from her social media followers. And when he was just six months of age, he was actually airlifted to another hospital, as I said, because his eyes and his ears started bleeding. So this is a six month old baby that's going through this. The hospital staff later said that they were suspicious, but they didn't have any proof. So they kind of just let it slide. So by this time, Lacey had signed up to Facebook and Twitter and she was posting things on social media like, please pray for baby G, we are at the hospital again. So it was actually at 10 months old that they put the feeding tube in baby Garnett's stomach. So again, think about that. He can't vomit because of the surgery he had to his throat. And the mother now has access to and control of everything his body must absorb. By the time Garnett was one year of age, he was admitted to hospital more than 120 times, which is more than an 80 year old would have been admitted to a hospital. So that just think about that over 120 times that poor boy had gone to hospital. Lacey joined many churches and she would ask for help to care for her really, really sick son. And one church actually ended up banning Lacey because they said she lied too much and she would steal from the church. They said words to the effect of, she would steal anything that wasn't bolted down. So that is really telling of her personality. When Garnett was around two years of age, Lacey ended up moving to Florida and she joined this mum's group that were into holistic food and medicine. You know, she was doing Facebook posts about, you know, veganism and how she Western medicine is a thing of the past and this type of stuff. Now you have to think baby Garnett at this time is still eating through a tube and he'd had the surgery so he couldn't vomit. So everything she was giving him, he had to absorb. Lacey was posting things on social media about how vaccines were a thing of the past and people got really concerned about her Facebook posts and they ended up calling CPS and CPS did another check on her. 
so they actually this time said to her, you need to start feeding your baby normally. He had dropped in weight and they actually said, you need to take him to a pediatrician. He needs help. So you can imagine, oh, pediatrician, she would have lighted up over that. Another thing to post about on social media. And she did just that. So she took baby Garnett to a pediatrician again and was posting about it on social media about how he was failing to thrive and he was low weight and all of this stuff again for the attention. This is really weird. So in the mother's group, she would complain about how she was desperate for a sibling for baby Garnett. And one of the mothers in the group actually offered up her husband to start sleeping with Lacey as a sperm donor. And it continued for a while, but they ended up stopping it because the other mother got really jealous of Lacey sleeping with her husband. When Garnett was three years of age, Lacey started a new Facebook page and it was titled Garnett's Journey. And on that Facebook page, she didn't have family or friends. It was just random people in the public. And she posted about all of the medical issues that Garnet had had. Again, this was just another avenue for her to really absorb all of that sympathy and that social media attention. So it is said that Lacey really stretched the truth on the Garnet's journey page because, you know, she didn't have her friends or family to be accountable for. But apparently she said that Blake, the father, had died in a car accident. She uploaded a photo of the alleged father and someone did a Google search and it was just a stock image from Google. So everyone kind of got suspicious that she was really putting a bit of salt and pepper on all of these stories and blatantly lying about the child's father dying. In 2012, things got real weird. So Lacey and Garnett moved to a place called Green Meadows in New York City. It was like a fellowship community, cult vibes. And they lived with all these other people in this big house and they all worked together. Um, and the people that were there said that they were so surprised to see how healthy and happy Garnett was because Lacey had told them of all these health issues. It was like a real hippie community. And as soon as she and Garnett moved there, she started complaining again about Garnett's ear infection. And again, she started taking him to another local hospital and reporting all of these illnesses, all the while continuing to post on social media about Garnett's journey and how sick he was. Apparently while she was in this community, she was found stealing again. And one of the people that lived there caught her standing over Garnett, screaming at him when he had a tube in his ear. On Garnett's fourth birthday, Lacey, of course, did a social media post and she talked about how we're at the hospital again. Every single birthday that Garnett's had, we've been at the hospital. So again, really trying to absorb that sympathy. Poor me, poor, poor me. I'm at the hospital again with my son on his birthday. On this occasion, Garnett was actually referred to an endocrinologist and the endocrinologist said to Lacey, we don't think you need the feeding tube anymore. We want you to go and get this assessment done to see how many calories he's taking in because we don't think he needs it. So just remember that tube is Lacey's control over Garnett and how she, she impacts what he eats and everything that he digests. So the funny thing is, or not funny, the thing is after she was given the advice to go and get this assessment done, she didn't get the assessment because of course she didn't want Garnett to actually lose the feeding tube because then she would lose her control over this little boy. On Garnett's fifth birthday, he went to school and his teachers said that he was happy, healthy, normal day at school. But then soon after, Lacey said that he went downhill fast. He was really sick, fever, really, really unwell. Now, the thing is this, over the course of the weekend, one of the teachers checked in and said, how is he? Like, how, how's Garnett going? And she was like, oh, no, he's really, really unwell. But then the teacher saw that she'd actually been posting photos of them out and about doing everyday activities. So again, she's trying to get this, this hit off the, the school thinking, oh, he's, he's really, really sick, but he wasn't sick at all. And this was proved by looking at the time posts of the social media posts and pictures of her and Garnett over that weekend. Later, the records show, her phone records show that she had been Googling sodium, high sodium levels in children and all this stuff to do with sodium and sodium in children and the impact sodium has on the body. And so it was around this, this time when she was doing the, the sodium searches, impact sodium has on children, that she then said that Garnett was having seizures and she took him to the hospital, said he's got a high temperature, seizures. And of course, if you give someone a huge dose of sodium, it can cause seizures. That's one of the consequences. So on, on one of these days, Lacey calls her friends and says, Garnett's having seizures. I, I, I've got to take him to the hospital. My car's broken. Can you please, I need your car. So the friend comes over and says, oh my gosh, shit. The, the friend describes Lacey as being relaxed and calm, walking around the house. Oh, we're going to get to the hospital. 
the friend's like, your son's really, really sick. We need to get into the hospital now. And she was concerned and confused at how blase and relaxed Lacey was being. Oh, we'll get to the hospital. We'll get to the hospital. The friend says, look, why don't I drop you to the hospital now so you can go there? And she's like, no, no, no. I'll, I'll use the car. It's fine. You, you go. We'll drop you home and then we'll go to the hospital. So Lacey then drops the person whose car she was borrowing home. Then on without going to the hospital, she stops at another friend's house. And obviously the speculation is so the two friends could see how sick her son was. And, oh, my goodness, your son's sick and give her that attention that she so desperately craves. And so it kind of, you have to speculate, she'd be trying to legitimize how sick her son was so the friends could see how ill he was, you know, having seizures. The second friend was like, are you coming to play your son's really sick. You need to go. Now, this is also sick. On the way to the hospital, when she left the second friend's house, she pulls over on the side of the road. Her son is seizuring and sick and in all sorts. And she takes a photo of her son in the back seat in his car seat and she uploads it to social media. Poor, woe is me, he's sick again on our way to the hospital. So, on the way to the hospital, she takes the time to take this photo. Twisted. So when they got to the hospital, they checked the baby's or Garnett's vitals and they were completely normal. They, they observed that he was trying to vomit, but he couldn't. He couldn't vomit because of the surgery. So the doctor that observed Garnett said that he actually didn't believe Lacey's story and he was suspicious. And he moved them upstairs so they could be investigated by somebody else. So this doctor clued onto it really far, similar to the first ever doctor that Lacey took Garnett to. Another piece of bizarre conduct from Lacey is at the hospital, she kept saying to hospital staff, check his sodium levels, check his sodium levels. He's had really high levels in the past, which tipped them off because when they checked his levels, they were through the roof. So you can see where we're going here. Sodium levels, she indicates that's been the issue in the past. She controls everything that he eats through the feeding tube. So you can see where we're going with this. So on the 18th of January, Garnett woke up. He was completely fine. The, the doctors were like, okay, he's, he's doing much better. So whatever it was had cleared. He was jumping around, happy, positive. Now the next day on the 19th of January, again, the nurses were like, wow, he's made a full recovery. If he's like this in the morning, we're gonna let you guys go. All right, so let's take a look at the infamous footage. So you can basically see Lacey after she's been told, if he's fine in the morning, you're gone. So she she can't do the Facebook posts anymore about how sick Garnett is. She see what she does. So she basically takes Garnett into the bathroom. Three minutes later, she comes back. Bang. Just like that, all of the symptoms start again. He's sick. He's trying to vomit. He can't vomit because of the, the surgery he had on his throat. So all of this, the seizures, they all start again. So let's take a look at that footage. This was footage they were able to confirm with times of her searching sodium and the effect of high sodium on children. So she was Googling that while laying next to her boy in hospital. So you can see he was fine. And then there's footage of the mother taking her son into the bathroom. And remember, she's got access to the feeding tube. He then comes back three minutes later. Bang, sick. So he's trying to vomit there. And she presses the button and then the nurse comes in and they're like, what? He was literally just fine. So she calls for the nurses to come and see Garnett and the nurses are shocked. How could this happen? He was literally just fine. The doctor came in and ordered more blood work and you could clearly see that Garnett was trying to vomit whatever it was out. But because of the surgery, there was only one other way that it could come out. So we started doing explosive diarrhea. Garnett said that he felt extremely thirsty and his blood works came back normal. So the doctor was like, okay, sodium again. He's had another high dose of sodium, but how can this be? We're not giving him the sodium. He was fine literally hours ago. And of course, the whole time, Lacey's on social media. My poor Garnett, how could this happen? So sick, at the hospital, <clears throat> things have taken a turn for the worst. All these things on Facebook, all of the attention that she's been craving. So at about 5.30 in the evening, <clears throat> you can see on the footage that Lacey, so he seems to be doing better. He keeps making these swift recoveries. You can see then that Lacey takes Garnet into the bathroom. And then as soon as he comes back from the bathroom with Lacey, he is vomiting and seizuring. And this time it's really, really, really bad. So she calls, you can see Lacey on, <clears throat> on the camera. She gets the button 
that you press to get help. So you can see they come back. She picks that up straight away. So like she knows that she's about to press this button, but she's waiting. He's sitting there. She puts the button on the bed and then bang, as soon as the, the seizures and his all of the symptoms start to happen, she presses the button. But you can see on the footage that she's anticipating, I'm about to press this button as soon as my plan plays out and as soon as he's sick again. She actually organized for a friend to come and comfort her at the hospital and she said she wasn't gonna fly in the helicopter. So he needed, baby Garnett needed to be helicoptered out of there to go to a bigger hospital. Because of his seizures, he needed extra medical um, assistance. And she says to her friend, I'm not gonna go in the helicopter, I'll just drive there and the friend was like no you need to be with your son in the helicopter why are you leaving him so again this bizarre behavior all of the posts on Facebook of course but she doesn't even want to fly with her son while he's being airlifted to a different hospital while Garnett was in the room having hectic seizures Lacey was observed by the medical staff to leave because her phone rang so she went to speak to a friend about oh my gosh she's having seizures while he was having seizures and while he needed his mother there to support him while he was so sick. So this is further evidence that the medical staff were like, what is going on? She didn't want to fly in the helicopter. He, he needs his mum by his bedside and she just walked out to take a phone call to talk about how he's sick. So again, Lacey kept saying to the medical staff, check his sodium levels, check his sodium levels. And it's not clear whether because it's actually gotten so bad and she's thinking he could die, that she's actually trying to tip them off or whether She's, again, trying to plant the seed that, oh, it's been this history of high sodium levels. That's what's causing this, when really she's the one that's been dosing him up with sodium through his feeding tube. <laughs> now, at this point in time, one of the doctors became extremely suspicious because he'd, he noticed that the Mickey tube in his stomach had been opened and none of the nurses or him had opened it. So it, straight away, he's like, it's the mother. So he's actually given a direction that she was not allowed in the room for a period of time. But before this, before she was excluded from the room because he was having like seizures, he was very, very unwell. She was taking photographs of him during this and uploading the photographs of her sick son in hospital to social media. Again, making all those posts and getting all of the comments that she's so absorbed and that she was adoring. The doctor said that Garnett's sodium levels were through the roof and that there was no way possible that they could have got to that level unless someone dosed him up. The doctor said that his sodium levels were so high that if he had any water, that he would die. He would become brain dead. Because if you think about it, it salt, sodium in cells, when you put water in, it absorbs the water. So cells can burst. So he was basically saying no one could give him water or he will die. That was the ongoing routine. With time, Garnett started to stabilize. It became normal again. So it was quite clear that someone was dosing him up with sodium and then he was having the seizures and he was being really sick. And then as that sodium wore off, he was completely normal again. So this was quite clear. However, this time his sodium levels were so high that he wasn't allowed any water. Now what happened next is Lacey got access to the room and a medical staff member walked in and they saw her. There was a drink bottle of water under the bed. She'd given Garnett water. Straight away, he went into, he had complications and the doctor was like, you've given him water. They excluded her from the room and he was brain dead. He was determined brain dead soon after because she'd given him the water. Garnett died on the 23rd of January of 2014 and within two minutes of him being pronounced dead, the mother, Lacey, took a photo of her son, uploaded it to Facebook with a caption along the lines of, Garnett, the great journey on wood today at 10 20 so letting her letting all of the public know that her son had passed away so you'd have to think social media going on your social media page would be the last thing that you'd be thinking about if your child had just passed away soon after Garnett's death Lacey messaged one of her friends at the community where she lived and she asked her friend to get the bag containing all of his Garnett's feeding tube stuff and to throw it away and to not tell anyone where she put it the friend was like that's weird so she gave the bag to police and they found a box of sodium in with all the feeding tubes. So obviously she'd been the one dosing her son up. And think about all of the seizures. This is not a pleasant way to die and to have this excruciating seizures and in and out of hospital. What she did is unforgivable and just disgusting. The police then obviously confiscated all of her electronics and all of her stuff and they did a deep dive into the history, which I've just set out for you. And it became quite clear that she had Munchausen syndrome by proxy. She, the baby had been in and out of hospital and she'd been inducing his illness using various things, but most, most often the sodium. She'd been dosing her son up with sodium. So she was really one sick, twisted individual. 
there were over 23,000 photos and videos of her son when he was sick. So think of that and how much she was posting on social media, just craving this, this attention and the sympathy. It's a real twisted mindset. Lacey was charged with both first degree and second degree murder charges in relation to her harming and ultimately killing her own son. And in respect of the second degree murder charge, she ended up being sentenced to 20 years, which in my view, not long enough. She should never see the light of day again. She did the most heinous crime that you could ever do, which is harm your own child. And from her phone records, the police actually found evidence that she planned, now that her son was dead, to go and have another child. And when this blew over, she'd have another child and probably start the cycle all over again. So have you heard of this case? I feel like when you Google Munchausen syndrome by proxy, her name just pops up. Um, and it's just one of those cases that as a mother, it just made me sick to my stomach. It's absolutely horrific. What did you think about this case? Do you think 20 years was long enough? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, don't forget to actually like the video. And if you like this true crime comment content, please subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one.